everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Christo, and today I'm going to be talking. Uh, my session today is Help My Jenkins is Down. Um, so probably everyone in this room is uh, wondering who am I. Uh, my name is Stephen Christo. I am actually a support engineer uh, at CloudBees. Um, previous to this, I was actually working uh, on the Eclipse Hudson project. And uh, I am currently right now a core contributor um, to Jenkins. Also, a very, uh, I am very popular right now with the subversion to migrate to 1.8 for the SVN kit at the moment. Um, outside of work, I am the maintainer of a code coverage tool called Cobertura. Um, and also, here are some uh, contact information about me. Um, yeah, so that's my uh, GitHub avatar. So I'm a big fan of Futurama, so uh, if you guys uh, know who that is, then uh, yeah. Um, so the, the one thing I wanted to uh, initially address was um, a little bit of confusion. So a lot of people have actually confused me with a guy by the name of uh, Stephen Connolly, who is another core contributor. Um, we've seen, I, I've seen tickets come from him and come from me with addressing our names and things like that. So um, the, uh, I think the one difference that we identified, like the biggest difference is that he's actually better than me at uh, uh, Mario Kart. So that's the way we identify each other easier. Um, okay, so I actually wanna ask the audience a uh, question. So, how many of you have actually encountered an issue with Jenkins in the past? Yeah, it's like pretty much everyone, right? Um, so what, what I used to do for myself was, um, uh, before I used to uh, just restart everything and it would hopefully work, right? <laughs> Right? I mean, it's like, great, I just restarted it, and it's all up and running. And you know, two, three weeks later, it'll come back again, sometimes even sooner. And the worst part was that it came sometimes at the worst possible time. So it came like right in the middle uh, like of a release or something like that. So um, I had actually come up with a rule. Uh, so when Jenkins goes down, um, there is a rule that I always follow, which is to not panic. Because the, a lot of times the first reaction to these things is to um, just you know, restart everything and it will all of a sudden start working again. So, but that's, I believe that that's like more of a like hacky way to get around the actual issue of trying to figure out what really happened behind the scenes. So um, the one thing I always suggest also is for people to just stop for a second, don't panic and quickly restart, and maybe gather some more information. So um, the one thing that I've always encountered was um, the, uh, I always ask, you know, when someone says their instance is down, you know, what do they mean by down? I usually identify it by what the user is currently experiencing. Because saying something that is down, it, it could mean a lot of different things. Uh, the one thing that I've, I've basically said, you know, are you experiencing something like a you know, 56K modem? Uh, for the young kids in the audience that don't know what 56K is, it's just very, very slow, and it takes forever to actually load the page. So that's one style. But then also you have the uh, famous 500, 502s, 503s that come up that you know, it's uh, hard to tell what those are. So um, there could be other issues behind the scenes going on. So. Um, I have actually broken up this talk into two different styles. So the first one is going to talk about the like 56K, you know, it's very, very slow. You know, I'm experiencing, um, I click on a link or something like that and it takes forever. And the other one is the, you know, 404, or uh, sorry, the 500 errors, you know, what do you do in those situations? So uh, with that being said, 
I have actually uh, a story to tell that um, I've actually written a demo for it too. So I call this story the build that is taking an extended nap because um, I have actually encountered an issue where uh, the build takes a little bit longer than normal. So I wanted to you know, dig in and find out what was on, going on. So um, let's hope that this works. Um, so as part of my presentation, I had actually, uh, okay, I guess there, that's better. Um, so in this presentation, I have uh, just a simple script that runs uh, an echo, and then it sends an email out. So it sends um, an email, but the thing is that afterwards, it's just sitting there, right? It, it's taking forever, and I had started this um, over, I guess, not a minute ago, but um, I had actually started this before the talk, and it's been sitting here for a while. And you know, I want to identify what, uh, why it's uh, taking this long. So um, if we follow my first rule, um, which was don't panic and just restart the instance, then we're good. So, um, well, great. Now, you know, I'm not panicking. I'm not doing any of that. Uh, now what do I do? Um, so in... Uh, so the one thing that I always have suggested to users was to do something called a thread dump. And a thread dump basically, it captures the, all of the threads that are currently running on the JVM. So the reason why you wanna do this is you wanna identify um, what threads are running that are taking forever. You know, where is it at in the code that is taking so long to run? So, um, to actually get one of these uh, thread dumps, there are a couple ways to actually do that. The first and probably the most common way is uh, to hit the uh, backslash thread dump URL. So if you go to the Jenkins URL, uh, whatever it is in, the case, in your case, uh, if you do backslash thread dump, you can get the um, actual thread dump through Jenkins itself. But the problem is sometimes when your instance goes down or something happens, you're not always ready, you are not always, uh, you don't always have access to uh, the UI, right? So there has to be alternative methods for doing this. So the other way is the kill three. Um, just to be clear though, kill three does not actually kill it, it just gets the thread dump. So it's a very safe uh, method for actually getting the thread dump. Unfortunately, though, this does not work in Windows. So the last option is something called JSTAC. And JSTAC is given to you by the uh, JDK and I believe the JRE also. Uh, so it's built into Java, so you can just grab that and just run this command. So this will also generate the thread dump for you. Um, so uh, why don't we go on ahead and get the thread dump? So we can see here that it's taking a very long time. Uh, and I had suggested previously to get do backslash thread dump. And here it is. I hope everyone can see. So here is the thread dump. So there's a lot that's going on here, right? So we want to identify which one of these is associated with this build, right? The one nice thing about Jenkins is that for every single thread that is running, we actually do a uh, name. So for the current item that is building, we're doing something, or we rename the thread to have the name of the build. So if we do a search, in this case, I have JUC slow demo, slow, Demo, okay, here we go. We have identified uh, the actual thread that is very slow. So this, um, and it's also build number six too, so it, it tells us a little bit about it. Um, so how, how do I go about debugging this? I mean, it's great that I found it, but what does that all mean? So we can see here that um, it is doing some kind of uh, sleep, and it's, done by some plugin that we don't know. Um, 
Unfortunately, in this situation, I had written a plugin uh, just to do a thread.sleep. So uh, if we go in here, so you, you can see here that um, this is basically right here where the actual performing of the uh, code is. So if we go in here, um, so I have actually, I actually have it right here. Um, on line uh, 71, we, I am doing a, of course, sleep. So, of course, this is just a demo. It's not actually identifying it. Um, we've actually seen people put like regular expressions in there that were uh, very bad, um, or the ones that would take a very long time, or uh, different things like that. Sometimes we've seen um, requests made to uh, like a website that is currently inactive or is experiencing some slowdowns. So um, this. So now that we have identified at least where in the code it is, we know how to fix it, right? Of course, in this case, remove the sleep for that long at least. Probably make it a little bit shorter. So, um, okay, let's go back here to the presentation. So, great. So now we've we got a thread dump. We know uh, what it is all doing. So, what is uh, the moral of the story? in this situation? Well, the, I usually say, you know, of course, the first rule is don't panic, right? Um, and in this case, uh, we did a thread dump which identified what threads were causing a lot of issues. So um, with that being said, I actually have another story to tell you guys. So I call this one, please reply to my HTTP request. because. Um, Sometimes uh, when I click on a link, it might be a little bit slower than others, and you want to know why that is, right? So the actually, I have a demo also of this situation. So um, while, while doing this, uh, there was I had actually um, created a plugin in uh, the UI to figure out or to actually perform a slow request. Um, okay, I guess this is, I clicked the Manage Jenkins link, and it's, okay, I guess it's taking a little longer than normal, right? So I clicked on that link. Up here we can, uh, I, in Chrome there's a like little wheel that keeps spinning, so, um, being great. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, we don't know exactly what happened, right? All we did as a user was just click on a link and it's not working at the moment. So, um, so I get, okay, I have a quiz for you guys now. So, what would we do in this situation? So, would we uh, restart the instance? Would we get a thread dump? Or, um, or what would we do in this situation? Or restart the computer? <laughs> what was it? Paint it. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess, how many people think uh, thread dump? Okay, how many people think just restart it and it'll work again? Uh, I think we have a few people. <laughs> Um, so, of course, we want to do something like a thread dump, right? Um, that's great. Here, let's, why don't, while this is currently running, um, let's get a thread dump. Well, this is great and all. I mean, I can then identify uh, a call that is made to the Manage Jenkins page, right? So I went to uh, the manage page and I figured out that this was the request that was made that takes forever. So great. Also, we can see in here that, again, it has to do with the plugin that I wrote that is basically triggering this event, right? So that's, um, let's actually take a look then. It says on the get URL on line 25. So if we come over here, over here, 
we can see, oh, here it is again, another sleep for a very long time. Um, which, by the way, if you guys actually want to learn how to write plugins like these, I actually have a demonstration uh, called Get Drunk on the Code, so you guys can actually learn how to do these types of plugins. So, um, okay, well, uh, getting back to the issue at hand, I mean, this is great, right? I've identified a thread, but th there's a problem with this, right? I have to be available all the time. I have to know what the user clicked on. I have to know all these different elements, right? Um, I mean, what would happen if, for an example, uh, they don't remember what link they clicked on, or uh, it happened 2.30 in the morning, right? I mean, most people are probably asleep at that point. Um, but, I mean, you, you don't know what happened. So, um, while actually, um, I, had, I was recently talking with uh, Kosuke, and I was saying, you know, what is, uh, he was also asking me, you know, what is the one troubling thing about support? And I mentioned, you know, these thread dumps, you know, they, they're great and all, but the thing is that I want them to happen automatically, right? You know, when I click on a link, if it's taking a little longer than normal, I want to know about it right away. I don't want to uh, figure it out. Um, I, I, would, I don't want to have to go digging through it like I am right now. So, um, Kosuke and I got together, we did some uh, pair programming, and we had contributed to a plugin called the Support Core plugin. And this plugin it used to be internal to only CloudBees. We had fairly recently actually open sourced this uh, to get the community involved into contributing because uh, this plugin, it can identify a lot of things. Um, and another scenario I had put in there too was detecting things like deadlocks. Um, so it, it, it's able to figure out a lot of these things. Um, so with that being said, uh, since this is a URL request that is very slow, uh, let's try to get this, right? Um, let's try to figure out what URL was clicked on and things like that. So, um, that being said, if I go over here, and it should be on the left here called support. So basically you click on this and we basically have a giant list of items that uh, you were able to record. So if you want to do things like uh, logs or figure out what version of Jenkins and plugins you are using. This actually bundles it up all into a nice zip file for you, so it's quickly to, or it's easy to navigate through. Um, so in this situation, uh, I want to figure out what slow requests happen. I want to figure out you know what URLs are taking the longest, so I can fix them hopefully. Um, maybe also some deadlocks. You know if if a deadlock happened while I was. Uh, while I was working. Um, the other thing that I will not go into is the thread dumps. They actually do recording of uh, CPU cycles. So if a, a thread is actually taking a very long time, uh, CPU-wise, uh, it actually records the amount of CPU it's currently using. So you can identify which uh, threads are actually taking a long time. So in this case, let us uh, just generate a new bundle. Um, okay, and of course I've had a lot of demos of these, so I have quite a bit of them. So in here, uh, I, had, I just unzipped the uh, file that came with it. So if I go into this uh, slow request folder, I can see that there's a lot of them. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are from uh, me doing the demo several, for several days, so. Uh, right, so with that being said, usually we want to figure out, you know, the last one that was executed in this case. So um, the last one was, uh, at least if you can give like an estimate of what happened, you know, when did it go down? So of course in this case, we know that it happened uh, about two minutes ago. So if we open this up, it is actually recording uh, a thread dump of the actual thread that is running and it's taking a very long time. So. Um, we again can see that it is in a sleep method. Oh, wow, okay, I guess, I don't know if I can increase the size of this or not. 
Can everyone, can anyone actually see that? Okay, so I guess if some people can see that, that's fine. Um, so in this case, it's recording the amount of time it takes. But the interesting part is that it keeps doing the recording for you. So it will keep telling you, you know, it's, it's at uh, 1400 second, or uh, 1400 milliseconds, and as you, oops, as you keep going down, you know, 1700. So this actually tells you a, a basic like story of what's going on in the thread. It's telling you what it is currently doing, so you can figure out if it's actually stuck. So a very, very common one that I've seen was that um, a regular expression, um, it, was a, it was a very bad regular expression and it was in one of those, uh, it was doing like, a, like an infinite loop almost. So it was doing the callback constantly. So um, we were able to identify um, that issue. So in this situation though, we can see that, um, right, again, it is doing the sleep. So we can see that the uh, actual URL request took a very long time. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, well, great, we now know about this new plugin called the support core. We can identify threads that take a long time. Um, so what is uh, the moral of the story? A lot of times thread dumps are required for things that take a very long time to actually execute. Um, the problem is you're not always there. So I have, um, I've been contributing a lot to the support core to make sure that you know, it makes it easy for you guys to identify what is the slowdowns and um, what, are, what are certain issues that you encounter. And it will help you figure out um, like certain issues of uh, like slowdown or if you have like a, a view that takes a very long time and things like that. So um, also I just wanted to um, do a very, very quick um, mention. Uh, we have at CloudBee something called Jenkins Operations Center, Operations Center, excuse me, and there is a plugin that we use called the monitoring plugin. So what this plugin does is it will actually monitor your other Jenkins instances. Um, I, I won't actually go into the details of this. There is a presentation later on today that will actually go into uh, a little more depth into this. Um, so, okay. So, the final story I want to talk about is, um, I call it logs, logs, logs. And this is because, um, as you can probably tell in a few minutes, or in a few seconds, what this is going to be about. So, um, the one thing is that, oh, I, sorry, I forgot to mention too, that I'm gonna be transitioning from the slow requesting to more of the uh, 404s that are being produced, or excuse me, the 500s that are being produced. So um, the one nice thing is that uh, Jenkins uh, is recording a lot of information. You know, it's, uh, if like exceptions happen, you know, if errors happen, you know, it's, it's always recording it, but uh, the problem is that a lot of times you are unable to grab the logs from the master. And actually, I found out that not a lot of people know, but there, for certain slaves, there are actually logs that are being produced on the slave machine itself. So you can go in and grab those logs and find out more information. If, for an example, there was like a disconnect, which is a very common issue. So this will help you uh, in determining you know, what happened with it. So um, the one thing is that uh, if you define the remote uh, file system directory, which I'll show in a second, uh, so if you go over here, so this uh, remote file system directory is the location where you're um, like executing, or where the slave is told to uh, store everything. So. Um, in this case, if I go to the configure page of my slave, in this case, I call it JUC test slave. So um, if I go in here, it's actually going to be storing log information. Um, but I mean, this is great, right? You know, it's logging information for me. It's telling me all these things. Um, but there's a problem, right? What would happen if, um, let's say for an example, I, that something happens on my machine 
And it happens not one, two, but maybe like 10 or 15, right? I mean, you would have to go through each one, log in, and try to grab all these log information, right? That could be, you know, fairly tedious, right? So um, I guess, hmm, if only there was a way to actually grab all this information and bundle it up very nicely for you. If only, if only. Well, uh, recently we actually added this feature in the support core to grab logs from the slave machines um, to gather information on the slave machine. And the nice thing is that it actually works um, with uh, cloud types. So if like, you have an EC2 instance or something like that, it'll also work with that, where you're always um, you know, you're doing like elastic type um, slave uh, like provisioning. So um, in this case, I am just going to uh, just go back to the uh, home page, and I'm just going to gather it for this one slave that I have right now. Um, so if I go into support, again, I can gather. We don't want slow requests this time. We want the logs from the slave machine. We want to know what happened, why it disconnected. So let's generate a new bundle. So OK, well, great. We generate a new bundle now. Now let's actually go into it. Um, OK. So we can see here that there is uh, a lot of, uh, there's other logs which are um, the, if you define a log through like a logger or something like that, it will throw, or it will put it here. However, we only want to know what happened with the slave, you know, why it got disconnected, right? Um, so if we go into the nodes, so in this case, we want to go into the slave machine, uh, the test slave machine. So if we go in here, we can actually see the logs. The nice thing is that it actually keeps record of all the logs from you know, previous time periods. So if I want to identify, OK, what happened, um, you know, I guess a uh, couple hours ago or something, uh, I should be able to quickly identify. In this situation, uh, I had actually turned off my uh, I had actually stopped my master instance, so the thing was that it failed to connect to the master properly. So, I mean, this, this will identify you know, what had happened on the other end as well. Because sometimes you are given, when you disconnect, um, like in, I can do right uh, now, will be, uh, you can get something like, like an error like this, and it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't help really what happened, right? I mean, I did a kill nine on the slave machine. I don't know what happened. But the next time it will reconnect, it will identify and tell you, you know, what happened, basically. So this is um, another great way to, I, I guess, identify what um, happened, you know, if there's a connection issue or something like that. Um, okay, so, oops, let's exit out of this part here too. Um, so then what is the moral of the story in this situation, right? Um, well, the one thing is that you always want to look in the logs. Um, there have been issues where, you know, if a URL was, um, if it hit like a, a 500 error or something like that, sometimes it'll throw a, um, an exception or something like that, like if I typed in a wrong username or password or something else, you want to know what these things happen. The logs are verbose and they will tell you all these information. The other thing too is that you always want it on the master and the slave machine. Um, I've actually encountered a couple issues where um, someone was unable to identify what happened in the slave logs, it was saying that the application threw an out of memory exception. So, uh, and then the slave machine actually restarted. So, um, they were unable to identify it. So, this was able to quickly determine, you know, what happened, and they were able to fix the issue. Um, so, actually, I would um, 
would like to actually ask a couple people, you know, if uh, you have any questions. I would like to actually give first uh, credit to Spike and uh, another person named Michael Neal. They were, uh, they were basically a lot, or they were helping improve this uh, talk quite a lot, and with the demos also. Um, and I got a thumbs up from Kosuke, so that's another big plus thing too. Um, I actually wanted to open up the floor to see if uh, anyone had any questions or, uh, it would be not very specific, but it would be more like just general uh, support questions. Um, yeah? How are the slave logs generated? So the slave logs are generated with three different ways. So um, when you launch a new slave, um, it will actually, so if you do like java-jars, or the JNLP is like Java WS, the one thing is that it redirects the three different types. So um, the standard out and the standard error are both, um, are both actually always being produced. Uh, this, the logs that I've identified were actually merging the two into one, so. And then also there's the wrapper, so whoever is um, invoking it. So if, let's say for example, you have it installed as a Windows service, right? Um, the, uh, the wrapper itself will keep record of the logs also. So if, let's say for example, I stop the Windows service, it records that information. Um, yeah. So with those files, I tend to go to the file system and then read like the wrapper log or the, right. the error so, log. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing that the support plugin is going to grab? Yes. So it'll, it'll grab that information. And it'll grab, um, right, so all that login information for you. And the nice thing is that it takes it from, you know, maybe a couple times previous disconnect or previous connections. So, um, and it would grab from all slaves and stuff like that too. Yeah, in, in this case, I only have one, but okay. if you have, let's say, like 100 or 150 slaves, um, it will grab from all of those slaves. So that way you don't have to, you know, go through and open one up and then search and then keep doing that over and over. Is it the same as the logs button back on the node page as well? Um, back on the node page. So I, I gotta we go back here. Um, the oh okay so. In the Jenkins console. Uh, so the Jenkins console actually produces, uh, I believe, both the standard error and the standard out also. Um, yes, so basically it would be those as well. So, um, yes, of course. Um, so the one thing is that uh, Chi was mentioning the log size. Um, so we, so um, in the slow or the slow requests, um, you know, if I click on a link and it takes a very very long time, you know, the thread or it will keep appending and pending, and sometimes the log can get very you know large. So th we actually cap it at two meg. So. So we had, oh, we actually cap it at two meg. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, what was it? So the the slave logs themselves actually do not get capped. So, or the is was that what you were asking? Like the slave in the math? Uh, no. So the first two megs. So basically, after two megs, we stop recording. And we just leave it like that, because, right? Because usually after that much, it will, um, it, it's you can actually tell the difference. I mean, two megs is quite a lot for a, a thread dump, or in uh, for a slow request and things like that. We don't actually. St okay, I should actually identify this. Um, what I'm actually talking about is the uh, slow requests that are capped at two meg. The actual logs themselves, like the slave dot logs, are not capped. So whatever size they are is whatever size will be on there. Will be transferred over. So uh, does that answer your question? Yes. Right, but usually on your slave logs, it will not be 
over two megs of logging information being done. Usually a lot of it is done on the master. And the one thing that um, we actually do on the master, um, let me actually show everyone, is that we actually break it up too into smaller sections as well. Um, this helps uh, remove the, uh, so like if there's like a lot of login information that's constantly being printed out, you know, breaking up into smaller sections and then uh, doing it that way is a lot easier as well. So, um, because, right, a, a lot of people, they put like verbose logging in there, so we wanna make sure that we, um, you know, cut it off at a certain point. Otherwise, the bundle would be like massive. Like, I've, I've actually encountered that issue where, you know, a, a bundle was, you know, maybe I think like 50 meg because they were doing like very, very verbose logging. So uh, we had actually had to cut it down in this way as well. So um, does that answer? Okay. Um, yeah, let's start with him. So give us. Yes, of course. So um, he was asking, you know, is there a different method to actually get this? So there is a, a CLI operation. Um, I think, uh, where did it go? Yeah, so there's one here called support. So it gives you a command, basically. And you can basically identify the components that you would want to invoke. Um, so it, it makes it easier to generate these bundles if you don't have access to the UI. Um, okay, so uh, you had a question? Uh, so memory leaks are a little bit different. And um, the, the memory leaks, um, so, uh, okay, I guess I could, I could, I should, uh, unfortunately I don't have a demo to actually do a memory leak. Um, uh, so the memory leaks themselves um, are actually done through um, a, uh, you, call it, you can, has everyone, has anyone in here actually heard of uh, something called a heap dump? Okay, so a, a lot of people have heard of heap dump. So basically what that does is it uh, pauses the JVM and it, it records all the memory that is in there and it's pre-existing and all the objects and the references and everything. And this is basically how you identify the memory leak, but a lot of times um, this is actually really bad because it could leak a lot of like uh, confidential information about your company or about your builds and things like that. So usually we don't uh, suggest this. So there's another operation, um, it's called a heap histogram. So uh, what that allows you to do um, is it allows you to get a very, very basic understanding of uh, the different objects that are in memory. So uh, let's uh, actually, let me just demonstrate very quickly. Of course, this will not show a memory leak, but it will at least help you understand you know, what the memory, or at least what it is. So um, in this case, I have this operation called launcher. There's a command called, uh, I think it's uh, jhat, and then histo. So histo is the histogram, because we don't want to get the full uh, dump, we want to get part of it. Um, and then we do 3849, uh, which is the process ID. Oops. Um, um, let's see. Uh, is that actually one? Hold on really quick. OK, so let me actually get the process ID of the Java instance. So uh, jhat, histo, and then the process. OK. Um, oh, I, oh, I think it's uh, is a heap histo. Um, it's one of these commands. Give me a second. Uh, um, yeah, so oh, that's interesting. Um, yes, but in any case, I need to, um, oh, uh, sorry, sorry, it's called JMAP, I, uh, sorry about that, it, it's called JMAP, oh, uh, 
Ah. Uh, Question. Is this the same one that shows up on the Jenkins monitoring plugin? Um, the memory histogram? The memory histogram? Uh, on which one? Yes, so the, another tool is uh, the monitoring plugin um, that allows you to basically grab this information as well. Um, the one problem I had actually found with that plugin was um, it, it's, it's very hard to uh, like quickly identify certain things. Um, the nice thing about the support core is that it's all um, in like a, a text format, so I can quickly navigate to what I want um, the, the monitoring plugin, it's very nice UI, but um, it's, it takes a very long time to, oh, actually, that's why I spelled histo wrong. Um, so, right, so it's the same thing, basically. Um, um, okay, so let's, let me just, oh, I know why. Okay, yeah. So, um, it basically allow it will get you the thread dump that you want. Um, okay, so it looks like I'm actually out of time. Um, I'd like to um, thank everyone for uh, watching the presentation. Um, so thank you, everyone. <laughs>